in a universe where life does not end at death. We explore the infinite possibilities forged by our very minds. Welcome to our Thadian Anthologies. Before we get started, I just want to inform you that this series was recorded over Discord. If the quality dips, it's due to connection issues. Greetings, fellow travelers and storytellers. Welcome to a new Reborn in Power series, featuring a Sin chosen from Squad 119 of the New Age campaign, Psy. Follow along as she is hired by the Turth Trintrek administration and preps for the festival before the events of a new squad. Enjoy. The cycle is 140 ACR. You, Sai, have been assigned to Turth Trintrek, going to help them establish a, a festival in honor of the new administration that has just came, come, come into power. Apparently there is some issues happening as the administration has come into power, which is why they, why this is this festival is necessary to be planned. Your contact is a is the assistant to the mayor. His name is Reggie, and as you reach this city on the southern border of Voestavez, the capital environment, on the harbor. You enter inside, you see you see people walking around, they like they it's it's not very busy streets, but approaching you are a few figures. Um one sin frame who approaches and you you know him to be Reggie as as you've seen him uh, a few times now in hollow vids and he's basically contacted you to come here and as they approach you also see a a yen beside him and you also see a Nagonian and a few others and as he approaches he looks at you and says welcome uh Sai to our to our humble city. It is a pleasure to have you here. A pleasure to be here. Uh, we are we are excited to begin planning for this festival. Um, you're going to be working alongside uh, several of us, uh, but we we want to make sure that all the people are are doing well. But first, let, let, let's escort you to where you're going to be staying for the time being. And as they begin to walk off, you see all the people are just kind of like walking walking by. Some people will look over at you, smile, nod, walk away. And they begin to escort you towards what, what you see is a large fountain in the center of this open plaza where behind the fountain is a is a massive hall and they begin to walk towards the hall specifically and as you walk up the steps the doors open up you see 
a large chamber where you notice several people are are, are sitting down. Uh, so people are going up to an altar, uh, putting putting stuff up to, up to the altar, like at the bottom of it, and uh, like some of them are like flowers, little little um, little like mementos that they kind of just kind of offer up to the altar, and you see. Reggie and the rest of the, of the group are walking up the steps. The Nugonian looks over at you and, and says, So, uh, your family, um, the Medines, are, are they, are they, uh, open for business to potentially bring in new, maybe like, energy equipment that could potentially help us with uh, renewables here in the city. We do have a few open contracts that are available for bidding at the moment. Yes. Mm. And uh, Re- Reggie looks back at Nigonian and then says, Let's let's keep the business talk for after the festival is concluded, all right? And he nods, and you guys continue moving forward up to a door. The door opens up, and you see a little like a little station with uh, a bunch of a bunch of crates. He, he goes over to the crates. The crates open up. You see um, gift wrapping, confetti, uh, a bunch a bunch of different. Uh, items that are needed to kind of like he, he's like i'm not sure exactly what you need uh we do have a we do have a 15 15 000 dollar uh, uh 15 000 volts chip for you to use or any equipment any any things that you might need or might want to invest into for the festival itself If you need any any mm-hmm. assistance, so you can come and talk to us. You you have a place to stay at the uh, the Turthin uh, up, probably about like the, we we will we'll give you a, a a map of the city for you. That would be most excellent. And Is there anybody I should be speaking to about traditions that you'd like incorporated in this festival? Uh, I will be speaking with the, with the mayor uh, about any traditions that he wishes to. This is this is brand new for the city entirely. Uh, the previous administration did not have any kind of festival. Uh, mainly, whenever festivals would go on, it, they would take place in the in the capital of 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 the West Ves, the Pil- Pillar Command, and well. We want to try to establish some, something here for the community at large. Um, so that they don't have to travel back and forth every, every time. So that they have something to remember. Uh, but I will, I will speak to the mayor and then relay that information to you. Um, but for now, you can uh, relax, kind of get, get yourself situated in, in the city and yeah, feel free to wander around explore uh we will be we will be uh, doing our our business uh, in in our own chambers if you need anything just feel free to call call us on your codex and you see they all begin to head out and leave the door <laughs> closes and you are left there alone what would you like to do i'd like to look around and see what kind of room that they've set me up in the room the room is a uh, it, it's rather large for what all that is inside here. There's there's a there's a long there's a long rectangular table in the center. Um, there's crates underneath it, uh, and then the crates on, on the side of the wall. You see a a window uh, on the other side of of the room. Uh, actually, there's 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 two windows specifically that that kind of go up in, into an arch, and they have that it, it, you can look look. You can look outside and you see like gardens on the side of of the hall that you're in, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm sure you remember when you when you 
<laughs> when you did the climbing <laughs> across. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's a, a recap. Set the scene. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you look through this this area, you look inside the crates. The the crates all have generic party party stuff, like you know, like string, like silly string, and and a bunch of uh. It, there's like candy in in one, and it, it it's more like you're planning a birthday party rather than a festival, and they I it seems like maybe maybe they don't know what what to do. I half grimace, half chuckle at the situation yeah. I'm been thrown <laughs> into. Um, As Kate. Hey, Mm-hmm. As you're as you're doing this, you're um, you're kind of looking through through all these crates, thinking about what, how, like what how you should start with this, and then suddenly you, you hear on your your codex begin to ring. Do you answer it? Yeah, yeah, I answer. Well, I, I check you, to see you, if I have you check on it. You check to see, and it is actually. Uh, one of the Medin, one of your family. I grimace. If I had <laughs> facial structure to grimace, I would be grimacing. So your, your, um, your face kind of contorts a little bit. <laughs> unconsciously, I set the programs where it's like my LEDs go into like angry eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I know I know they know that my comms are connected and if they don't answer now, they're gonna keep calling. So I sigh. And that wasn't fun. And I, I pick up the comm. You answer it and you see that it is actually um one of your one of your fa- uh the Medine's family um administrators. Of the, like basically like like a- any any people that go out on on specific missions for the, for the Medin, that this is the person that contacts them to see that everything is going according to plan. Um, this handler of, of a sort, his name is actually let me let me see my my naming generator. <laughs> Heck yeah. I need to write this down. Oh, pad. Open. Now I know the handbook name. His name is Tithon Medin. 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 I, I, I don't know how, how you pronounce it. I, I, <laughs> I've been saying Medin. Yeah. Um, is, is he like, like a branch, branch, branch member, member that, that I haven't really spoken to? Uh, y- you were told by one of... Uh, like one of your main family members, um, that this is the person that would be contacting you. Uh, mm-hmm. You're not too familiar with him, though. Uh, he is a he is a yen. Uh, he is a a, a yen. Uh, a vo yen, though. And you you see, he kind of looks at you. He's like, "Hello, uh, Sai." Is everything Ether. Is everything all right where you are? Everything's perfectly fine over here. Nice landing. Um decent setup. Maybe a little bit more administrative work than than our normal standards, but nothing wild or completely unexpected I see very well keep me posted on anything any any situations that might come up um we want to make sure that this partnership with the city is well taken care of we believe that there might be future future negotiations for our well, our family business to take over there. Of course. 
and don't don't feel too overwhelmed about this, Sai. Oh, I'm sure you do great. Aru, Thank you, Tifa. I'll be leaving you now. And you see, hangs up. It was that was a rather rather calm, nice, you know. It was nice. It was a nice call. It, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Very short and sweet. <laughs> but as you are uh, kind of looking through this area, um, is there anything that you might consider doing first? What, what is your first plan of action in this planning of the festival? Well, I'm going to look at the map and kind of mark off all the public spaces and large courtyards. Of course, we've got the main area with the fountain that has a gorgeous space. That's probably going to be the main thing of everything. But I kind of take note of parks and other areas. There, um, there are there are parks on, on the out, outskirts, like right by where you see a a forest to the to the north northern region of of the of the city. Uh, you see a you see uh, at the at the south region there is a a command outpost, kind of kind of like sitting there. Um, you you see that there are a there's a, a bunch of of buildings that kind of like line through through multiple streets. The streets are small and narrow, um, and there are like group groupings of what seem to be like a, like housing complexes. Uh, but it's not the the city isn't as technologically advanced as you've seen other other cities, especially capitals across the pillars. As you is on the. On the map, is there like a denotation of like this is a commercial district and this is a housing district, or is it more like England where it's a bit more mixed than than? It seems a bit more mixed. There is there is a market a market district area, but it's very it's it's rather small. Uh, you're not quite sure like all the all the um, businesses that are are in that in that market, but. Um, from what you from what you gather on on the actual map as it as it labels them, it seems more like restaurants and and like like small small restaurants. Not no, there's no like there's no franchises or like chains that are are here. It seems like a, <clears> a <throat> it seems like a, a it, it it's a city, but it's not it's not a, a very popular city. Not not many people come come down here. So you got your work. Yeah, you got your work cut out for you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm I'm gonna. gonna, I'm gonna want to find a guide, but I don't want administration just being like, "This is fancy building number seven. (laughs) I I want. I kind of want to find someone who. Show me around at the cool, the, 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 the popular spots in the city, of course. But like you yeah. know, that, that one, one cafe that they ate when they were set they were being very good type of guy. All right. So, do you want to go out into the city and try to find someone that like is like who who lives here, or do you want to try to go through the officials that are that that are here? In the hall. I think, I think we're just, just gonna, gonna go out. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna you you go out into the city. And as you head out into the city, you see a bunch of people kind of walking around. Um uh there are there are uh women and children around around the fountain and the children are kind of like you know standing up on, on top of the edge of the fountain uh balancing and trying not to fall into the water uh you and is there any specific area you want to go to or do you want to go try, try to ask them in front of you 
You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll ask, ask one, one of them in front of me. Front of me. I'm, I'm going to ask, ask for... Um, I don't, don't eat, so I can't really ask for restaurant, restaurant recommendations. recommendations. Restaurant recommendations? I'm going to ask for... I'm going to ask for... Um, for their favorite craftsman, for knickknacks, trinkets, something to bring home. Okay. Uh, you, you from there. Uh, as you as you head up to them, how how do you go about talking to them? <laughs> Approaching <laughs> them. To the children. <laughs> there's, there's a giant <laughs> sin frame that's coming up there's to the shop. <laughs> okay. Um. I'm going to give a little wave and see if that's going to catch any of their attention. You see, and uh, as you as you approach, you see a one, one of the mothers of, of, of what looks like two children look, looks over. They're all they're all Taunus Prime. So they're like, you know, regular Prime people. And they they look over and the, the, the mother kind of like waves at you kind of confused about wh- why there's a robot rape waving at her. <laughs> I take that as permission to walk up and actually talk. Uh, go ahead and roll me an influence check. Oh, you got good influence. You, you, you're not... Oh, wait, no, never mind. You don't have good... I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you have, how good your influence is. <laughs> I mean, why is that charm? That's true. The thing is, I have I have the other character sheet open and not the one that I need. <laughs> I mean, your your yen yeah. your yen embodiment must be in there somewhere, you know. <laughs> okay, that's the one. Rolled an eight. Satan and influence. Yeah, influence. Okay, so that is a seventeenth. I got talented. Nice. Uh, as you look over, uh, you you kind of wave. You see, she's kind kind of confused, and then you begin to walk over. And uh, what do you say to her? I say hello. I'm sorry to interrupt. I've been sent here on work for family, and um, I, you know, want to bring some trinkets home, some souvenirs home. Sorry, you could. Oh, uh, you me where I should go looking. Oh, of course. Um, uh, th- there's a market district at down, down uh, the uh, the uh, the street down there, and she you see she points over there. Like, uh, uh, kids, what, 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 what's the place that you that you go to all the time? And then you see uh, one of the like the, the little boy kind of, kind of comes up. It's like, huh? Uh, um, we like we like a uh, Nelson Nelson shop. Like, uh, Nelson? Yes, uh, uh, Nelson. He he he's a little uh, tinker. He he bit makes makes toys for the kids. Oh, that's that's, that's excellent. excellent. I have. A lot of cousins. cousins. <laughs> um, of course. Uh, and she nods, and she's just kind of like, um, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Um, I'm Sai. Can I have may I have your name? And I reach out for like a handshake or. Oh, uh, I, I, I am, I am Nessa, and she goes to shake your, shake your hand. Hold on, right now. Nessa the mom. Nessa the mom. <laughs> I shake her hand. I thank her. I give. I give the kids a little wave, and like, if they seem interested, like a uh, high five as I go by. They uh, they, they they seem to be very enthralled by the water of the fountain. Okay. Okay. I'll leave them alone. Um. <laughs> So you, so, uh, yeah, I'm you head down that way. way down to Nelson's. All right, you go, you go and head down that way. 
you see uh, there there are act- there's actually a, a bundle of more people in this area as a as you get into a, a, a little bit of a larger crowd not too much though um and you see like little little pockets of, of people um there is a an like outdoor eating area people are, are munching at um as you continue mo- moving through you do you do spot a, a a little um a little station where this this man with a, a large spectacle is kind of tinkering with some kind of uh wood and and gears on on this little contraption that he's that he's building uh on a table inside of this sta- this little this little station that that he has uh people are kind of walking past him mostly um every now and then they'll they'll walk up look at something that's hanging on on, on the side and then you 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 see as you as you're approaching them you you see them go how much for this doohickey it's like oh uh, that, that's gonna be uh uh 40 volts uh, that's too expensive man come on and then you see they walk off how much? Let's, let's see how many volts Sai has. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, Sai was pretty broke. <laughs> Here is inventory. Okay. Awesome. Sai has like 30 volts. That's great. I could probably find something. And remember, you you you, you were told that you were given uh, fifteen thousand volts for anything that you need for the festival, too. Yeah, but there's there's levels, and it's not quite <laughs> like I might like go out on their dime to figure things out, but this is just like surface level investigation. So I I wander over the stall and. I'm I'm letting the owner um, talk to talk to them, so I'm just kind of looking at what type of drink it's. Uh, you see, it it looks more like there's there's a there's dolls hanging, um, but they're like wooden. I, I, everything is wood is made out of wood and and some metallic pieces. Um, as you as you look at them, uh, there there are, it looks like like maybe like. Um, carved, carved spacecrafts that have have been made, and you see that they have wheels on them. And when you when you go to to grab them, you see that there is something that's kind of kind of spin. You you spin it, and then you see the wheels begin to turn. Um, and then there are there are necklaces. There are there's like some some jewelry. Uh, there are belts that that are hanging. Um, there is bags as well. He seems to be like some kind of leather worker and, and woodworker. Is there is there any little spaceships that that look like something that the Atiz family would utilize? The they probably wouldn't use utilize any. Any spaceships, right? Um, you you look at the mall. Um, I mean, there, there's there's a few there's a few cool looking ones, but they don't they seem to be like different different models uh, across the pillars. There there is one uh, RF, which is like a Rune Forger spacecraft. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of them that have been designed. There's also uh, Cork Man spacecrafts. Um, you assume that these are mainly for the like the kids to to buy and use and and, and play with. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see the guy lo- looks over, who you're you're assuming Nelson, who is who is like done fixing up whatever he was he was working on, and he looks up. He's like. Can I can I help you with anything? Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. And I I kind of 
have a flashback to, to um, uh, Nissa's little, little sibling and have a moment and I'm like, I'm, I'm not quite sure what he'd like anymore. Um... And then I pause for a moment, and I'm like, "Do you have something that's been on a shelf for a while that some kids that some kids have been staring at for some time?" Hmm. I mean, let me see what I have in the back. And uh, you see, he kind of stands up. Uh, th- this guy, uh, he grabs onto a cane. And then he begins to limp a little bit, and you see he has he one of his legs is actually uh, made out of wood, and you see he's limping. Uh, he technically is enhanced, but he doesn't have like enhancements or anything like that. Like he he is he's crippled, <clears throat> and he goes. He goes out in, in back and he and he grabs on to what looks like a um what what looks like a, a large box and then he kind of he, he he's holding it under one of his arms and then he sets it down on the table. It's like um I, I have a few trinkets in here that kid, kids tend to eye most of the time and then you see he opens it up. And it looks like there are figurines that are c- kind of placed into uh, different slots, and they are they they are nicely made and carved. Um, and the figurines are of notable figures throughout the core. Oh boy, I'm gonna slurred early, early huh? <laughs> There are uh, I have a there are runic council members, uh, notable rune forgers in here. There are uh, there are core, like core command officials inside here as well. There are different like legendary legendary like figurines that are like just legends through like in, in stories and and different like shows and stuff. And I have a moment. I haven't, I haven't seen him in a long time, and I don't know if I can actually get it, get this to him without causing a ruckus with the Atiz family. Mm-hmm. But I look up to Nelson, and I give him a. I can't smile. I don't have a smile, but I give him a nod, and I'm like, Yeah, yeah. I think he'd love this no matter. How long it's been? Um, how, how much, much for, for the set? set? Uh, which set do you want? Do you want the uh, Rune Forge set? Uh, there's. I also like, and you see, he lifts. He lifts up underneath. Like he he lifts up the, the the top half of it, and there's more underneath. And you see, actually, archmages. Uh, archmage figurines from Archaea, on there too. It seems like this guy like pays attention to details of like everyone around like across the core like uh there's a there's a core command set a uh, rune forger set and then i have these this uh uh castell set for for the Mudge and castell members i i think i have to go with the castell set all right. Um, he looks up at you. He's like, uh, "This will be like sixty volts for the for the set." And I quickly, easily, and dip into the pots for running, running it, running the um festival, and it knock off my own thirty volts. Okay. But I, I give him... I send over 65 volts for him for the set. Okay. 
And he and he looks up. He's like, "Thank you for your for your patronage." I, I, I nod, nod and I, you know, pack it up and then tuck it under my arm. Yeah, he uh, he makes sure he makes makes sure to give you a, a, a nice like carved wood, wooden um uh box that all, all that the entire set basically fits into. And you take it, you you put it under your arm, and anywhere else you would like to go. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna wander, wander for a little bit, and I'm gonna, gonna look for some place that's n- not just the um, fountain area, but, but has a good view. Okay, yeah, you uh you you wander for a little bit. Uh, go ahead and roll me perception check. Got nothing perception. It's will. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Will. yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Uh, it takes you probably about like thirty minutes to wander around to find some some places that, that isn't the the fountain. Uh, you do find a, a little bench area. Uh, up up no- uh, northward. That is right by what looks like a pathway through the forest region, and uh, the bench is kind of. Look, looking out at, at like a, a garden that is on on the edge of the forest, that seems to be maintained by you. You're not sure who, but maybe there are some gardeners that maintain the gardens throughout the city. I snap a picture. You snap a picture, and as you snap this picture, you. Suddenly, get a a memory, and as you receive this memory, you remember the gardens of Moriot, the luscious landscape. Of Celeste Minari. And you remember. As a kid. As. Cypher Medin. You were. Exploring the. The region. And. Beside you. Was a uh, a friend of yours actually? You don't quite remember them very well, but it's. I mean, it was kind of like one of your only friends, but they were a reticon. And you haven't seen them in in a long time, actually. This reticon. Was a was being groomed to be a warrior within Celeste Minari, a guard of a sort, and he helped. He kind of let you. He helped you explore away from the Medine family and kind of got you into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but when you guys would go go out, you would go into the forest and. There was one. There was one area in particular that you would go to, where there was a a, cl- a cluster of trees, where you could actually climb up them, uh, rather easily, and go up into a, a a area where the branches were so thick that you can kind of you can actually like tunnel tunnel your way through this section that was almost like a entire treehouse in itself. And Cy, Cyfra Medin climbing is impressive because Cyfra is honestly a little bit of a sickly child. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but your friend would always actually help you whenever you would go to go and fall. They would catch you <laughs> and then lift you back up. And when you it, it was a good partnership. partnership. When you're thinking about this, you're sitting there in this bench, looking at this garden, and you remember a conversation that you had with your friend. And they sigh. <laughs> they, they, they sigh. <laughs> <laughs> So many puns with this name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they they sigh next to you as you're kind of resting inside inside the branches of the tree. And he goes, Ugh. I don't know, Cypher. I keep hearing things that that's coming. The the shaman keeps saying Things like the dusk. The dusk is coming. I don't know what it, what it means, but my people keep wanting to wanting me to be a part of this whole this whole ordeal. I don't even know what it means. I feel more comfortable being around your family than I do with my own people. And he looks at you. What do I do? I don't... I don't know know if you could ever split from your family. From your cousins and little siblings. I... Keep in touch. Keep an arm out. You know I always sneak out if you call. Yeah. I will... I will keep in touch. Don't you worry. And you see he kind of grabs onto your shoulder and shakes you a little bit. (laughs) I laugh. Just, uh... Don't get in trouble while I'm gone. Only when I'm here. <laughs> I mean... I got in trouble meeting you. Exactly. And he kind of punches your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, alright, I think we should head back now. And as you begin to head back... You finish taking your picture of the garden on the outside of the forest. What do you do now? I I ponder for a moment. Um... Memories, memories are a complicated subject for me. Um, reaching, reaching a hand out. But I, I, I don't know where, where this person, if they're even alive. I stand, I stand up, up I look at the, the I look at the woods. And then I don't, I don't dare go, go in. You go in? I, I, I don't, don't I don't okay. go in. You don't go in, okay. <laughs> you uh I, I, I turn my I turn, I turn my back from the woods. You turn your back away from the woods. And do you head back into the city? I head back, back into, into the city. city. I've got, I've, I've got, got people to meet. I got, I haven't been at situation yet. You head back into the city. It, it is getting, it is getting closer to, to evening time. 
And they did say that you that you had a place to rest at the Turf Inn, which is actually not too far from where you're at when you're looking at the map. It's a good place to meet up with some locals. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll run into a bartender and an unfortunate owner. <laughs> Uh, and you, so you go over to the inn, and as yes. as you enter inside, you see you see a bunch of tables. People are kind of like sitting around talking. There's no music inside here. There is there is a a bar, and there is a bartender. Yes, um, and there is a door like right. Uh, t- all, all the way to the the uh, the right side of the of the place, and then there is there are stairs leading up um, on the on the left side of you as you're entering inside, and you see people are kind of just looking over, seeing a sin frame, which is it's not too common in 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 this city. And uh, as you go up to the bar, the bar, uh, you see the innkeep, the innkeeper. He walks up. He's like, "Hello, what can I do for you?" I believe I have a reservation for a room here. Um, Cypher Medine or Cypher Nis Medina Keys. I don't know what they would put it under. Oh. Um, uh, I got a Sai. Oh, that is most, most excellent. excellent. Someone so actually listens. listens. Sai, nice, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, I, uh, here is your key, and he goes and ha- hands you a key. <laughs> like, um, just don't make too much noise. All right. And I, I nod and you take the key, you go up to your room, open the door, and as you open the door, the door kind of slides open and you see a, a bed, uh, a table, and what looks like a, a bathroom. Uh, but you don't necessarily need the bathroom. <laughs> I, I don't really need the bed either. As you go inside, it feels you, nice. You do feel like you need you need a recharge. Yeah, it's been like even though you haven't done much today, it it feels like it's been a long day. Traveling takes it out of you. Yeah, but as you, I uh, I finish up typing up notes of people, places, possible things. For the festival in my in the codex and and as you finish up taking those notes, you set down your codex and you get ready to recharge your your batteries, so to speak. And as you power down for the evening. I'd like you to roll me a discipline will check. Are we going off of old discipline will before For, um, I met the crew? Or current discipline will? Uh, let's just go with old Okay. Or actually, um, just roll that. roll a straight will check. Straight will that that'll be oh, easier. Oh, straight will that's yeah. that that'll be easier. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be fourteen. Fourteen. Perfect. Fourteen. Fourteen. Ha. Huh. As you power off, 
you begin to feel a strange energy frequency engulfing your your mind. And as this happens, you open your eyes and you see all around you there are tubes of this strange it almost looks like this purplish blue liquid that you and you see like bolts of electricity kind of flowing through it and as you're walking through you hear a familiar voice So, Cypher, tell me, how can you assist me in this project that I am running? And you look over and you see a Kron standing there, a little bit of a hunched back. He is... I don't know how how, how tall is Cypher? Mm. She's kind of short. I want to say, like half a foot below average yen height. Okay, so probably like five four or so. Yeah, sure. You, you say as if I myself am not like five three. Okay, Cy- Cy- Cypher can be one inch taller than me. I say short. <laughs> okay, yeah, Cypher. Cypher's uh, five four. Cypher. Uh, Cypher is actually probably about the same height as this guy who is hunching down. Um, he is he he is a cron. Uh, he he has this these uh, it almost looks like these well, white pupils that kind of glow uh, straight at you. And his his skin is it's a light tan complexion. He has uh, silver hair that kind of flow flows to the side. He he seems to be. I mean, an average person. He doesn't have. He doesn't have like. He's not very. He doesn't seem very strong or anything like that. But he apparent, from what you remember, this guy, he is a pillar renowned scientist from Vicroniax, and he invited you to be an intern at his new laboratory that he has built. Uh, you remember him going by, uh, well, actually his, his name, his, his, the name that everyone calls him by is TL. But as he kind of looks at you and you're inside this massive laboratory where you see like a bunch of like energy conductors and, and systems that... That is, it's all, all around. He's like, I need someone who can help me negotiate with several other scientists and many of the senators across the pillars. And from what I have gathered from the information that was given to me by the Medin, you are one of the best negotiators across your entire your entire society. Cypher gives a sly smile. Of course, connections make for interesting avenues. I would also like you to potentially help assist me in some of my work here in the laboratory if you would be interested. At that, Cypher gives a more genuine grin 
and she 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 has a smile in her voice and she's like it is always a pleasure to be more use than just my name oh trust me I do not want wish to utilize your name I just want to utilize whatever skill set you have at your disposal your talents so to speak as you are a talented individual and I certainly hope that my perspective can make new paths indeed and he he nods to you and he's like very well well I appreciate you coming here also um as you as you leave the uh, my laboratory my assistant will give you the codex information to sign off on and you'll also be able to see your payment on there I hope it is to your liking Cypher gives gives him a nod and of course I'm excited to work with you soon the pleasure will be mine and as he nods and you are then you, you then leave the laboratory and as you leave the laboratory you see the assistant hands you the codex you go to sign off on everything and you see the payment uh you will be getting paid 5000 volts a month hey and uh, you also see that you, you'll you'll get, gain access to specific laboratory equipment inside the the massive the what 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 seems to be known as the TL dome, and you'll also be re- uh, receiving your own TL codex. And as you leave. You can't help but feel like you're you're going to be a part of something grand. And you leave back to your home, back to your home on Moriot, going through the pillar transport. And once back, you go to your room, and you haven't told any of your family this. Actually, this is this was someone con- someone contacted you about this, in this, and it wasn't through the Medine family line, so to speak. So, this is a this is a secret job that you that you or career that you might undertake away from your family your family's whole whole situation <laughs> outside the influence yep but as you're inside your room you hear the door someone knock on it Sephra? I slide the new codex into a desk drawer and subtly close it and get up and open the door and tilt my head at whoever's calling. It is your mother. And you see the door kind of like slight slightly like opens up a jar and she looks at you like is everything all right yes are you sure i am very sure all right well get some rest you have an important 
day tomorrow. All right. That that Cypher's face subtly Cypher's well practiced in keeping a keeping a a smile and a professional face, but like it's it's her mom. Mm-hmm. So like at, it's an important day tomorrow. The the flat kind of constant smile, polite smile Cypher has dips a little bit. Of course. And your mother looks at you. Uh, 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 roll me a deception check. Oh, dang. You, you're, you're doing it to the, 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 the really good one at Charm. Yeah, yeah. But also, this is, this is your mother. <laughs> that is a... Let's see. Oh. Yeah. 22. Yeah, uh, easy enough. You you kind of just give her a, a fake smile, but it dips a little bit. But it seems like your mother doesn't pay attention to that. She's like, "Remember, we need to please the the knights." All right? Yes. And she just gives you kind of like, uh, like a glare into your eyes. It's like, get some rest. You'll be taking over the family business soon. And you see she begins to walk off. And the door closes. And as you kind of go over, what do you what do you do inside your room as you are now alone? I I stand in front of that closed door for half a millisecond too long to be to be just kind of casual and I stare at the door and the smile falls and Cypher sighs and the room's the room's well organized there's books there's there's a bunch of academic papers mostly the papers are about law and diplomacy and this company's making breakaways with this trade route type of papers and Mm. in a little corner in a little corner there's a tiny shelf that doesn't quite fit in place and there's drawers on that shelf and on that shelf is just academic science books and in one of the drawers is just little bits, little bits of techware and and wire, and and another drawer has tools. Cypher pokes at the codex that she that she got recently got. Yeah, you go. opens it up, logs in. As you log in, you suddenly see a a plethora of entries flow through the codex. Uh, You've never seen anything like this before. This is completely brand new to you. As every codex that you've ever encountered always only has, like, at most... At most, maybe 50 50 entries. This has millions. And the walls are thick, so she's not worried. Um, At this, she gives a gleeful, surprised laugh. Giddy and free. And and spends probably a little a little too long just scrolling through all the different titles of articles. And the half of them are are file RX two connected to um so and so other file. But there's just a glorious amount of information. You begin to Find yourself going down multiple rabbit ho- holes that that dive into specific 
specific information uh what what is there anything that you're specifically looking for i i don't think cypher has a specific thing she's looking for at the moment just looking at like ran- random stuff kind of like you 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 end up going and, and seeing like different food groups and then you end up seeing that one food group is like a specific type of meat and it's like about like agrilock and then it goes in, into a, a subsection of what agrilock is and it's like a, a certain type of beast that is it's that wikipedia is haunted down. it's literally just the internet you're going through the internet at this point <laughs> um wikipedia wikipedia article spiraling this yeah. link to this link to this file. Um, every once in a while, she hits a file that's maybe like not not exactly like riveting, but there is a couple links in that file that she wants to get back to later. Mm-hmm. So she like marks down that file name to go back to later. Yeah, you begin to like, kind of go, go through through it all, and you do find like certain sections that you feel like shouldn't be accessible to you like information about core command about certain missions that that happened and certain certain entries that explain how well there there's one entry that that talks about core command and how and how oh they they there there was a there was a command squadron known as the hearts of glory that went around and actually like that this is like the story of how of how the command colonies came to be and how they began to explore different worlds and actually liberate worlds that were suffering from totalitarian governments and you actually start kind of re- reading through this for for a second but then you also find out that how like, how the war began throughout the the war for command specifically is what it's it's titled the uh this counterinsurgency began because one figure within court command uh be- like believed that court command ha- has some kind of massive technology that w- that wiped everyone's memories and caused the core reset to begin with and he started this huge conspiracy that bred throughout uh throughout several command colonies which is now why there is a war across the command colonies going on currently. And you start kind of diving into that information. And then there's also information about, uh, you actually learn that there's information about there, how there is a, there are forbidden regions, which you, you have heard about there being forbidden regions on Moriot. Uh, and there, there were, there were forbidden regions. Now they're no, no, no longer forbidden because apparently there was some kind of secret, secret uh, uh, plot that actually went to the moon of Moriot to wipe out a, a an evil cabal of of Beulah, which are which are gaseous entities, and you know, all, all this information is like it, it it feels like it's supposed to be classified information. But you're I, reading through it. Once I hit a few of those restricted, should be restricted articles, I look at the cover of the codex, and it's it's a new codex. It, it is brand new. You like this? Is, you haven't seen any anything like this before. I look at the case of my of one of my other codexes, and I pull out my tools, okay. and. I start just the case of the codex. I don't want to touch the inside. I don't want to mess up with any information, but I am going to replace the case of this old uh, new codex with one of the cases of a larger, more outdated codex. Because this is fancy. And Okay, uh, I would like you to roll me a mechanics check, please. Yeah. That is only a 
16. You are able to pop off the the cake casings of each of the codexes and replace them. Um, but as you as you kind of click on onto the the TL codex specifically, it kind of like locks, and you see, and you look at, look over at it. It's it's completely locked. All that early, early shit. Um. All right, time time to hack in. Um. I don't want to mess up this internship that early. <laughs> <laughs> God no. Uh, go ahead um, and roll computers check if you're if you're trying to hack in. <laughs> that is that is much much better. Um, that would be a twenty three. Easy enough. You're able to kind of like ha- hack into the actual codex, and it and it. Oh, opens back up and you see the files begin to kind of flow down. Um, and as they flow down, you go to click on one. And as you click on one, it shows that it requires a password. This didn't happen before. How late is it? How late in the night is this getting? Uh, it's getting pretty late. You're, and you're going to have to get up early in the morning for your trip to Voaro, which is on the harbor. And you're going to go be, you're going to be meeting with some master, uh, some actually, uh, plasmatic knights from, from the Rin Empire. So. I sigh. <laughs> <laughs> and because I really wanted to, to just, have a few, probably not more the uh, risky files, yeah. But like some of the more casual files. Like there's a file about a species of frog that I wanted to read through more, yeah. Um, and I can't, I can't bring this with me. That wouldn't be a good idea. But I could. Potentially. I'm going to. <laughs> um, so I, I look at my well-packed, nothing but everything, nothing but I need. And there's a couple codexes in there that that I bring and I read and I write, write with. Um, I take most of my spare luxuries out of pack. I realize I'm probably going to need more space for what I want to bring with me. And a probably a decent amount of clothing and jewelry and that sort of material that's packed away mm-hmm. makes it way back makes its way back to my closet, <laughs> and I I wrap up a new codex in some of my nicely folded piles and. Some of my tools for tinkering and and uh, a lot of that tech drawer, of random wires and gear gets thrown in there as well. It's it's kind of hastily packed. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't bother cleaning up the mess. And I, I give one last look at the luggage. And I, I, I saw him like, oh god, what did I do? Um, and I try to go to bed. All right. As you go to bed, you fall asleep. And as you fall asleep, you wake up as Sai back inside. The room in the inn. And that's where we're going to end this session. (laughs) Ah, yeah, that was good. (laughs) 
<laughs> gonna be some interesting stuff going on, huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm just glad if someone else gets it, they can't look at things either. <laughs> And it's got a fancy old case, so you know what? Not a fancy old case, but it's got a it's got a little bit of a disguise. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in in there uh, that that you can actually go and start looking through. Oh, well, I mean, maybe start looking through. Maybe not right now. Or maybe not now. <laughs> but yeah, um, that that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm 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 excited for where this this heads. <laughs> Because now, now there's a matter of going through the old, the other character. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I I need to get you, um, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Sheet here. I'll get it to you soon. I'm almost done. Alrighty, um, but yeah, uh, thank you all for listening. If 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 this if if you've been able to listen to this episode of uh, of size backstory. This interesting, interesting, interesting stuff as we go <laughs> through it. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that was I'm pre- very excited. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I thank you for listening to a Duality of a Sin. Be sure to listen to the New Age campaign or even listen back on A New Squad to wrap your head around this mini origin story for Psy. Also, If you want to be reborn yourself, you can subscribe as a Chosen to access Chosen Creation and exclusive Codex entries. Until next time, travelers, be safe, stay safe, and if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power.